And uh, just to get back to the start, because I, I like this long form interview and I love the podcast for that reason. Where do you start off? I mean, you're born. You're born in uh, Michigan. Detroit. In Detroit, and uh, your dad's a conductor. No, my dad was a musician, and he was working for the Ford Hour, which oh. was a, a radio uh, orchestra. Mm -hmm. and Henry Ford personal project. He used to come to the rehearsal. That's why I named Ford mm -hmm. after Henry Ford. And what instrument did your dad play? My father was the solo flute. And uh, so. You grew up in, or you, you're born no, no, in Michigan, Detroit. No, I was just a little Detroit. kid, and then my father got the top job at the NBC Symphony with Arturo Toscanini, mm -hmm. and became the solo flute for that orchestra, so we all moved to the east, uh, to New York. We all moved to New York, and that's where you grew up? I grew up all around many, many, many different areas of Long Island. But for some reason, my father would sell our homes every six months and buy another one. I think he was speculating in real estate on the side or something. Mm -hmm. But uh, so I went to many schools and, and many high. I went to six high schools. I probably went to high school where you went. If you and, and when you were you, uh, I went to North Hollywood High. So well, I, I went. I, to, I went to uh, Van Nuys. Oh, you did. And you were a wolf. I went to Leconte Junior High. And wow. Bancroft Junior High. Jesus. And University High. Wow. Oh, so you got out here and did the high school circuit out here Everywhere. too. I just was dragged along by my father. And now, so obviously it's hard to get a social network going when you're bopping from one school never to the had, next. I never had a friend. And I had an older brother who was great. So were you kind of up in your head then, sort of I was totally, out like, I was like a boy scientist and I was always inventing uh, and reading about the lives of the scientists. I, I wanted to be a physicist, but I was flunking mm -hmm. algebra and math. So my father said, you'd never be a physicist. And um, I just I just lived in my imagination, and I would play with puppets. And then I was paralyzed. I had polio, so I was in bed for a year and a half. So I very much lived a, lo a, 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 a loner life. So, in, and you had to sort of... Yeah, I, you know, I'm wondering, because I do think that when you're overstimulated when there's so much coming in, when there's so many video games and so many amusement parks and so much going on, your head sort of shuts down and your imagination sort of shuts down because you don't need an imagination. You have life coming at you at 200 miles an hour. And, you know, I always say to my wife, because, you know, we have twins, and she says, we got to get out there and stimulate them. And I say, sitting home quietly, you sort of self-stimulate at that at that point. Well, how old are the twins? They're three, and I'm not worried about them for a little while, but I mean, this sort of edict that we have to stimulate the kids constantly, my feeling is a little downtime. Give them polio, let them hang out in their bed for a couple of years, and turn on that mind. Well, you know, Hemingway always said to be a writer, you have to have an unhappy childhood. Uh, I guess I had a, I think from age uh, seven to age 20 was pretty miserable. Mm -hmm. That I remember, I was a very unhappy kid. Didn't get laid much. Uh, didn't even have anyone explain how that worked. What it was because I, for in a million years, I would never have guessed that the part of your body that you take a leak with is involved in anything romantic or beautiful, <laughs> such as <laughs> yeah, no. that. It I, does. I would never have put one and one together, and no one explained it to me. Yeah, it doesn't. Your dad never illustrated anything using the flute. Explaining how no, no, how this no, worked. No, no. He did find condoms in his drawer when my mother was shocked, and, and, and she said, "Well, that's for your father's flute, you know." So I thought it was something. <laughs> I thought it was a, some look out, Freddie. I thought it was some sort of expensive. Because my father had a very handmade silver flute, and I thought so. We would steal them, blow them up, and be bouncing them in the bar to go and, and people say, hey, what's that? Ha, ha, ha. And I said, that's for my father's flute. And, ah, ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> I, I lived in, in total sexual ignorance. I mean, I, I, I didn't know anything. But it is weird, too. Another thing about parenting now is there's all this, you have to sit down and talk to your kids about everything and educate them about it, everything. But we never talked to our parents about anything. Yeah, but we, I didn't know anything. Well, that's the whole point. You I would have, I would have thought my brother would have told me this or that, but there was a period of my life where my brother wasn't around, so I just didn't know. And, and I was old. I was. I still believed in Santa Claus when I was like eleven. 
Really? Yeah. So very a very sheltered, almost naive very upbringing. Extremely naive. And and a little bit of a loner, not a but lot of But with a lot of magic. In other words, the, the other side of believing in Santa Claus when you're 11 uh, is, you know, my, it was just believing in magic and believing in, in uh, things, you know, that are of, of the imagination. Like a, like a condom was meant for a flu. And it makes sense. It, it, I would have bought it. And so, so now, how does this turn into the whole filmmaking thing? You graduate one of the many high schools. Oh, you my attend. life story is fascinating. I went to many high schools, and uh, my, my interest in science, I had a lot of talent in science, led me to the theater department because lighting had just in those days become basically uh, uh, it was a new era in theater and lighting. Uh, that I was able to work with and I was technically very savvy and I wanted to be where the girls were. And so I started being hanging around the theater departments and I wanted to write stories and be a playwright and ultimately uh, found I had, you know, hanging lights. I would see the director telling the actors what to do and figure, well, I could do that. And, mm -hmm. and, and one thing led to another and I became a theater major. And this is at USC? No, no, no. This is this is high this school. Is high, uh, one of the many high schools. Yeah. But you do end up at USC, right? No, no. At UCLA, and I went. To, I was four years. I was a theater major at Hofstra College. Oh, I'm sorry. I got the whole uh, USC theater department. No, uh, the, thing George, mixed Lucas in. Is, George Lucas. George Lucas with you, yeah. Which later on you I'm collaborate with. I'm UCLA. So, uh, so you're brewing. You go. You go there. You graduate. From I had a very, I became very successful around, you know, age 20, and I became an important screenwriter, and uh, I, I very now much... Now, is that off of Patton? Before Patton. I, Patton, I had already gotten the job to do Patton because of other, I wrote a lot of scripts when I was in my early 20s, 21. But, you know, what I really wanted to do was write stories and scripts and then be a filmmaker like those great artists that we were seeing from... Europe and France and, and uh, Japan and Ingmar Bergman and Federico Fellini. So that even as a young guy, the kind of filmmaker I wanted to be is the kind of filmmaker who made Tetro as an older guy. So in a funny way, the, I had the career of a big Hollywood guy, film director, when I was younger and, and re rode that for what it was worth. I mean, I bought a studio, I lost the studio. I made a fortune, I lost the fortune. And, uh, you know, I mean, the, the odds were that I was really just washed up, in a way I am washed up, in, in that I never continued to pursue that type of Hollywood career. I just walked away from it. But you say washed up, but if you signed on to do a movie for, you know, a big budget Hollywood style, you know, a movie, they would be more than happy to have you at this point in your oh, career. Oh, no, I don't think they're running around. I mean. I don't know. Today, it would be a type of a script, a project that, I mean, if it were a gangster movie, maybe, and if it was that the stars, you know, if it were uh, whoever the big young stars are, said, I got to work with him or I won't do it, they would be willing. But, but I wouldn't want to do it. I, I, you know, I don't, I, I'm wealthy in another, in, in another way. I mean, maybe in another business. So they, is that, is that business, the winery? And the wine and hotels, yeah. And hotels, and is that just another creative exploration for you? It was just, it began out of just my own interest and enthusiasm. I didn't intend to have a big business. I got lucky with the timing because America pretty much became very fascinated with wine about 18 years ago, and I was sitting there doing it, and, and, and so now I have one of the larger wine companies in Country. Certainly, probably the largest, one or two of the largest personally owned ones. I, 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 I have to say, I went, uh, my wife and I toured your uh, vineyards uh, up in uh, up north uh, a few years ago, and it was, it was I, first thing I first thing I was thinking when we were sort of driving around trying to figure out which vineyard to go to. Uh, I thought, oh, Coppola. Well, that feels like it feels touristy feels like something a tourist would do because you're a celebrity director and now you've decided to make a wine 